Hi, my name is Stephen Casbier, and I'm a principal consultant with Copyright Clearance Center, or CCC. And today I'd like to talk about enabling business objectives with L&D. In other words, how do we go about aligning the actions and technologies that we're implementing within the L&D organizations to the goals of the business? As we know, every, every organization, every business has a business strategy. It's driven by things like market needs, disruptors in the industry, organizational purpose, and other internal or external factors. That business strategy needs to drive business objectives, and those business objectives and strategy should also drive the learning and development strategy, which provides a feedback loop into the business strategy. Um, it's important to notice and to realize that in a recently released survey by CLO Magazine, the performance of nearly 68% of CLOs is going to be measured by their ability to impact the business. In other words, how effective are they at making the L&D cog in this machine run? So that leads to challenges for the CLO. In a uh, Brandon Hall study, done in uh, the learning strategy study done in 2008 by Brandon Hall, they indicate that only 5% of respondents indicated that their L&D strategy is very effective at helping to achieve business goals. And only 22% rated their strategy as effective. That really does not align with the, uh, with the, the notion that 68% of CLOs are measured by how effective that learning strategy is. So we know that there, we have strategies, we know that we have business strategies, we know that we have learning and development strategies, and we know that there are actions that we're taking that help to move the needle, or at least we hope that it does. Um, the organization and business is very dynamic. Uh, the rate of change is increasing, and in order for learning and development organizations to respond to that, they need to be very agile and responsive and need to move at the speed of business. This leads to a lot of questions that L&D leaders need to think about. Uh, their learner experience. How can organizations deliver, in, and engage, deliver an engaging, relevant, impactful learning experience that's available on demand and meets the needs of all employees? And with an ever-changing landscape of compliance and new rules and regulations, what should CLOs consider in order to remain compliant and in order to drive that business forward? And specifically to the topic of today, how do we go about measuring in such a way that the L&D organization can demonstrate the impact of learning and, empl and employee performance on meeting critical business needs and business objectives? In order to go through all of this and maintain that agility and flexibility that's going to be required, what experiments need to be run, and how do those experiments tie back to the business goals in such a way that L&D organizations can figure out what's going to be effective and what's not going to be effective? Technology is kind of intuitively the answer. And in, in a recent survey, that same survey done by CLO Magazine, nearly two-thirds of CLOs indicated that applying emergency, emerging technologies to organizational learning was a competency that they needed to develop in their organizations over the next two years, specifically to address this kind of challenge. So intuitively, we know that technology is an enabler, is an enabler, but um, which technologies? And how do we go about selecting them? We're really drowning in a sea of technology. And in addition to all of the new and emerging technologies that are coming into play, Brandon Hall in their Learning Technology Survey of uh, 2017 found that 52% of respondents said that the inability to integrate with multiple systems is a barrier for them. So it seems that one of the most pressing challenges in L &D, that an L&D leader faces is how to establish and align a technology strategy with the L&D strategy, and the business goals and business strategy, and also to align systems across potentially multiple business units. Without a roadmap in place, it's going to be very difficult to address the needs of learners, 
as well as measure business impact. CCC's clients are able to address action within the L&D organization and align, align those with business goals. Specifically, we offer a service uh, which is a collaborative process of um, developing a, what we call a vision map. Uh, the goal of the vision map is to really understand what the client is looking for, what their long-term needs are, where they are today, and how to go about achieving those. Uh, how, to, how to go about achieving that. Uh, we do that by providing access to experts, providing access to experts in content, technology, in business process, and in skills development. Um, and uh, we also do this in such a way that we advise or provide an advisory service in order to become a, an advisor to our clients, to help them understand what does and what doesn't work. Ultimately, to define a solution or a set of solutions that's going to drive the client forward to achieve their goals in a manner that's aligned with the business. Vision mapping is not just about technology, though. It is about working across multiple pillars. It's about working across the processes of a business and the processes of L&D. How do you go about curating, developing, and delivering content and learner experiences that are going to be effective and achieve the goals of the business organization? What are the people skills that are needed, both within L&D and within the organization? And how do you go about defining a change management strategy that's going to allow the implementation of the selected technologies effectively within the organization? That coupled with an understanding of your content and an understanding of, your, of the technology choices that are going to help drive the business, that's what vision mapping is about. Now, vision mapping is a highly customized solution. It's a highly customized service for our clients. And these objectives that you see on the screen here may or may not be your objectives once we get into um, actually defining what, this, what the approach is going to be. But a typical type of uh, strategy, a typical type of vision ma mapping activity would include understanding the content and resource management needs of your organization. We, and in this sense, we want to go wide. We want to understand the breadth of what's happening within the organization and the breadth of requirements across the organization. Um, coupled with this, we offer a um, digital transformation readiness survey assessment, um, which helps us to understand and helps you to understand you know, where the organization is in terms of its readiness to accept the technologies and the process changes that are identified in order to transform the business to meet the changing needs of the organization. Now this is something that's optional and something that not all clients take, but it does provide an effective tool for setting a baseline for that change management activity. In addition, as, as is probably clear, we want to explore what that future state could look like. What is it that your organization is going to look like going forward? How, and how are we going to get there? What is the roadmap to get from where you are today to where you need to be in the future in order to align to business goals, in order to align to the business strategy, and in order to deliver on those goals and make an impact in the organization? So really what we're looking for here is to identify the small steps that can be taken in order to deliver the largest impact across people, process, content, and technology. So what are some of the outputs? Um, again, this is a highly customized solution. It's a highly customized service. But a typical type of uh, road mapping activity might start with a foundation. Um, you need a foundation in order to drive the agility that's going to be needed within the organization and in order to drive the agility that's going to be needed in order to address the changing needs of the organization and, and the, the, the rapid evolution of, of requirements. Um, that foundation could be technical, it could be process oriented, 
It could be with people and skill development within your organization. Uh, but what we'll do in that vision mapping is to help to flesh out what those activities are and what that foundation needs to be. A typical second phase in the road mapping activity is, is what we would call typically an expansion. And expansion is about building upon that foundation in such a way that again doesn't restrict your flexibility and agility, but it adds capabilities on the foundation that are going to help to enable the agility and flexibility that are needed to address business objectives. Uh, finally, the third phase, a typical third phase of a vision mapping roadmap would be elevation. Elevation is where we continue to um, develop the capabilities of the platform, of the processes, and of, of the skills development, of the content that you may have in order to elevate that to um, achieve what it is we set out to do in the goal setting activities and the goal setting part of this. So that's all great and fine, and it makes a lot of sense that that kind of roadmap would exist, but it still doesn't show how it relates back to the business objectives. And that's what we do with, I know this is not necessarily the easiest slide to read, but um, with roadmap alignment, along the left-hand side of this, um, uh, of this chart are business objectives. And, um, goals and objectives and um, uh, uh, goals for the, um, for the organization. And then along each row, we identify in what phase of the roadmap we either address, begin to address, or completely address that particular requirement, that particular success criteria. And in this way, we can identify, again, those small steps, those first steps, that are going to allow you to, to make the largest impact within the organization. We don't want to put foundation in place that's not tied back to the business goals. And we don't want to put foundation in place that is not going to drive value right away. That's what we're after. So again, the vision mapping is kind of a go-wide activity. Um, we're looking wide. And then we select within there, again, in a collaborative way, we select projects or activities that are going to drive that roadmap forward. Um, and our methodology provides, it provides that traceability from top to bottom, provides traceability from the success criteria straight through the vision mapping um, into this particular activities that go into any given project. That could be a technology project where there are requirements that need to be done. There's some, maybe some system development or system integration that needs to be done or the introduction of a new technology or emerging technology. The methodology requires that each thing that we do, each step that we take within that project relates back to um, specific activities within the roadmap and relates back to specific success, success criteria which aligned to business objectives. So, you know, another way to think about this vision mapping thing is, is in this light. You know, if, if I were Leonardo da Vinci and I wanted to paint the Mona Lisa, I may have the model sitting in front of me and the beautiful Mona Lisa, but I can't go there straight away with putting in brush strokes, those final brush strokes. I need to put in a framework first sketch out that framework and have an understanding of where I want to go with this painting and how it's going to work. That sketching is representing the vision mapping. It's representing the identification of a specific project within the vision mapping. And then we start to drill down into, drill down into the detail. So once we go wide, we then go deep, digging into the detail to begin filling in the um, filling in the Mona Lisa until we get to those final brush strokes and have the, uh, the masterpiece in place. This, again, could be a technology solution. It could be a process change. It could be a skill development activity. It could be a change management activity. But it all starts from wide and goes to, goes to the narrow. So we certainly know um, what needs to happen. Uh, we understand that from a business strategy, we need to drive business goals. From business goals, drive our L&D strategy. 
and to, 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 to then drive aligned actions with that and create the feedback loops. But we're dealing with a sea of change. We're dealing with a sea of technology. We're dealing with a lot of activity that could potentially happen. So the, the vision mapping activity, the vision mapping exercise is intended to allow us to, in a structured and reasonable and, and meaningful way, identify those actions that are going to best drive forward the business. If you think back to the Brandon Hall study that I mentioned um, early on, the Learning Strategy 2018 study, only 5% of respondents found their L&D strategy to be very effective, at very effective at helping to align business goals. And only 22% rated their strategy as effective. And fully, if you recall, on that chart, 17% had no learning strategy at all. The vision mapping allows us to create a strategy that by its very nature is going to be effective because it's aligned to business goals. So thank you very much. I appreciate you attending today. Um, I would love to continue discussing and talking about your goals. You can reach me at my email, scasbeer at copyright.com um, or at solutions at copyright.com. And you can find more information about us at copyright.com backslash CKMS. That stands for Content and Knowledge Management Services. Um, copyright.com backslash CKMS. Thank you very much.